Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RS Aquaculture. So for today's content, we'll be going through the usage of some prebiotics and what is the economical impact of using, using these prebiotics on your farm. So to first understand the problems and why do we need these prebiotics and probiotics is to overcome disease outbreaks in the farm, right? So this is a picture that I got from Seafood uh, Source. So you can actually click on the link and look at the article over here. It shows that the diseases are the biggest obstacles in the shrimp business. So this is a shrimp that is being infected by Vibro. As you can see that the black lesions are on the shrimp. In the event of diseases, what can we actually do? So the first and foremost strategy, of course, you can look at antibiotics. If it's a bacteria-based uh, pathogen. But for those who are exporting your, your product, you might know that there are regulations around antibiotic usage. So we highly do not recommend the usage of antibiotics, especially in this age of aquaculture where sustainability is really important for the end consumer. And the second thing is, you could also use vaccine. Uh, this is uh, available for species like Baramundi, Agrupa, uh, and even uh, Tilapia. But that's not the case for crustaceans because crustaceans' immune system does not support the use of vaccine. So it's not really available for species like shrimps or crabs. And the third option you have is to improve the host immunity of the shrimp by the usage of prebiotics, probiotics, and even immunostimulant. So that's what we are actually uh, talking about today is to improve the inherent host immunity of the shrimp or the crabs. If you look at the shrimp aquaculture business, uh, a majority of the diseases that are actually af affecting this uh, species is actually caused by Vibro. So Vibro is a common bacteria in the marine culture system. So you can see that one of the common pathway that this Vibro bacteria affects a shrimp is to infect their gut, hepatopancreas, and hence causes them to be sick. As you can see the picture over here uh, on the a pictures on the A, you can see that the shrimp gut lining is actually not full. Um, this is probably because the shrimp have already been affected and they are not feeding. And you can see that the the shrimps on picture B have very black and dark hepatopancreas. So this is an obvious effect on how Vibro is actually affecting the shrimp. And next we will be talking about how prebiotics such as MOS will help to benefit and blocking the pathway of infection by colonizing the gut. A good way to think about gut health in aquaculture sectors is to look for analogies in the human world. Right, so one of the most popular drink that you can find in your any local supermarket across Southeast Asia is known as Yakut, which is a probiotic drink to improve your gut health of your intestine. So what it does is to populate your gut health with beneficial bacteria so that you have a stronger gut which will improve your immune system and also improve digestion. In the recent years, there's been also a lot of science emerging in the prebiotic stage. Basically, prebiotics are food source that will promote the health of good bacteria in your gut intestine. So basically, we have two things, probiotics and prebiotics. Prebiotic feeds the probiotics that are used to colonize your gut. But for our discussion today, we'll be only focusing on the prebiotic aspects of uh, the aquaculture sector. So for us, unfortunately, we cannot use banana because of the cost involved. Instead, we use what we call MOS, uh, which is a mono saccharide, which is a type of glucose to promote the good bacteria that are in your gut lining. Right? As you can see here over at this paper here, that if your gut health is actually being improved with the usage of probiotics and prebiotics, you can actually prevent a lot of diseases in the larvae and post larvae stage. And you can actually find more information on this paper on understanding the role of shrimp gut microbiome in health and diseases. So just to take note, the typical inclusion rate we add for these prebiotics is actually in the range of 0.5%, which is actually very low. So for us, before justifying the usage of any item, we will always try to model the benefit it brings in terms of increased yield, reduced mortality, and we try to quantify it in terms of monetary value. So here I present a baseline case whereby we'll be culturing shrimp 
uh, which is Lithopaneus vaname, assuming an FCR of 1.5 upon size of 1,000 meter square, which is actually a hectare, stocking density of a modest 100 PL per meter square, uh, FCR is 1.5. And the harvest size is actually 50 counts per kilo, 20, uh, 20 gram size, mortality of 30% being the base case. So if you look at our yield for this one hectare pond, we actually get 100 PL multiplied by 10,000 meter square, multiplied by the mortality of 30%, which gives you 1 minus 0 0.3, and multiplied by the weight of 20 grams, we actually get 14,000 kilograms or 14 tons of uh, shrimp. And basing uh, using a price of 450 US dollars per kilo, this is at farm gate. We are actually getting a, a total sales price of 363,000 US dollars. So, this is our baseline model without using uh, the prebiotics such as MOS. So, by adding MOS, what tends to happen is you will see a reduction in mortality. Uh, we are assuming a 10% improvement from the base case, which is 30% uh, for the base case. And with MOS additive, we are actually adding, improving the mortality to 20%. Um, the typical application is actually only about 0.5% and typical MOS costs will, will range between uh, 10 to 15 US dollars per kilo. Right. So using this new quantification in terms of mortality, we can see that the U, uh, 100 PL per meter square multiplied by the area, which is 10,000 meter square, multiplied by the survival rate, 100 minus 20%, and the uh, harvest size of 20 grams will give you 16,000 kilograms or 16 tons. Assuming the price at similar price of 450 US dollars per kilo, the sales is at 72,000 US dollars. And the incremental cost you need to incur by adding prebiotics or MOS into the feed will include 16,000 of feet, which is your total U, multiplied by 1.5, which is your FCR, and multiplied by a 0.5% inclusion rate. And the per kilogram cost for this MOS is assumed to be 15 USD per kilo. Your total incremental cost by using MOS is only increased by 1.8 thousand US dollars. So the total improvement from the baseline case of 30% mortality is actually about 9,000 US, bringing your benefit to cost ratio is 5. Based on this good BCR or benefit to cost ratio, we've decided to apply this MOS across all of our farms for both mud crabs, shrimps, and even our fish farms because of this high benefit to cost ratio. And we have also made it available for those who are looking to utilize the same prebiotics such as MOS onto their farms to improve their mortality performance. And for those in Malaysia, you should be able to get them on our Shopee website. Uh, for those who are overseas, you can contact us for bulk purchases. We have also actually um, created another series, another episode on more theory on why do we use this MOS and what are the pathway and how does it improve your survival rate in, another, in our previous um, video. So we hope you enjoy this episode and hope to understand the commercial and the uh, economical impact of applying MOS on your farms and the benefit it brings in terms of monetary value. We hope you enjoyed this episode and if you like our content, do like and subscribe. And we hope to see you again at RS Aquaculture.